This is a semi-sweet coin-sized morsel of bread called a communion wafer. And in the Roman Catholic Church, followers believe it can be transformed into the body of Christ. Every week, many of the 71 million Catholics in the U.S. line up during Mass to receive one. Who could possibly bake, package, and distribute these millions of wafers a week? For half of the 20th century, the answer was nuns, who made them right out of their convents. That is, until a company called Kavanaugh went to war with the pious impresarios, leading to a full-blown monopoly. This is the story behind communion wafers and an epic battle between church and commerce. Nuns have earned money all sorts of ways over the years, from teaching in schools, to breeding horses, to opening a pizza shop in Cincinnati. In 1910, a Missouri-based order called the Benedictine Sisters of Perpetual Adoration decided to sell their communion wafers and altar bread locally, producing one million wafers for a Eucharist Congress in Chicago. By the 1920s, hundreds of orders joined the wafer game, providing these altar breads to parishes and big church events across the country. The work was tough. The nuns had to cut each and every wafer by hand, and demand was on the rise. That's why in 1940, a priest in Rhode Island made the fateful decision to approach a local tinkerer named John Cavanaugh, who, among other things, filed a patent for this hat rack and this power-driven toothbrush. The priest asked him to build a machine that would help the nuns churn out wafers at a wider scale. The result was the Cavanaugh Baker. And by 1955, the Benedictine sisters made 50 million wafers across three states. But the sisters' success would soon come to a screeching halt. In the 40s, John F. Kavanaugh's sons took over the Kavanaugh Baker patent business. And in 1955, they started making the altar breads themselves. And this time, it would be for full-blown profit. At first, the Kavanaugh's wanted to team up with the Benedictine sisters. Their response? We could never think of turning over so sacred a trust to have it done on a commercial basis. Kavanaugh would use a patented process to produce 50 million wafers in 1956 and 1 billion by the 1990s, enough to command about 80% of the market. Kavanaugh also made their wafers thicker and less likely to crumble, and the pièce de résistance? A little cross in the middle of each one. Wafer-making religious communities declined to near extinction in the wake of the Kavanaugh juggernaut. But the Benedictine sisters stuck it out. They bought new equipment to increase production, and they even released a series of low-gluten altar breads in 2000. At their peak, the Benedictine sisters held about 10% of the market share, giving Kavanaugh a run for their money. But ultimately, the sisters were undone. Not by Kavanaugh, but by the pandemic. According to the Barna Group, one in three practicing Christians stopped attending church at the onset of the pandemic. And for the first time in 80 years, Gallup reported less than 50% of Americans belong to a house of worship in 2020. Sister Lynn D'Souza told The Hustle that it seemed like the Lord was telling them it's time to close. Which means that, for now, Kavanaugh is king. But you gotta hand it to the sisters, who not only took on Goliath, but owned the market themselves for much of the 20th century. Looking to make bread too? The money kind? Check out the links below to sign up for our daily newsletter, which keeps you up to date on all the latest in business and tech.